We are here at the Audioholic Smart House. We have a special visitor from Audio Advice, Nick Rich. Awesome to have him here. We're going to be talking about his experience listening to this Audioholic Smart Home Theater and also talk about a really cool feature that Audio Advice has that can really help you dial in your home theater. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. Nick, how are you doing, my friend? Doing well, so happy to be here. It's awesome to have you here. As you guys know, Nick's been on our channel. We had a live stream uh, last month, mm -hmm. and we had a really good time with you guys. We're happy to have Audio Advice as a partner. You guys put out some incredible content. You have some awesome design skills, great partnership. Since you were in town, I wanted to bring you here, listen to the Audio Hulk Smart House Home Theater, as well as our family room system. Yeah. So I want to get your impression, what you think, not edited, tell me exactly what you're feeling. I want to know your experience when you listen to this system. First of all, what did you think about the design of the room, the aesthetics mm -hmm. of the room? Obviously, not everything is fully fleshed out yet, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you thought about the design of the room. And then tell me about your subjective listening experiences. Hated it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is this is an awesome room. Uh, the, the design of it was really well thought out. I think that every piece of it fits together well. It doesn't seem overly crowded. It's very open, yet it just flows well. So that's the first piece. Uh, the overall uh, seating configuration is nice. The acoustic, the acoustics are wonderful. So the acoustics sound really great. Um, just the overall look of the room. I think it's just perfect. I think you did a great job there. Uh, speaker placement is spot on. That's, I, I think that you did a wonderful job doing that. Um, and just the sound. I mean, that's, that's really what it's all about is the sound. So it was very immersive, very detailed, not overly harsh. It just, it sounded really great. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is just the room acoustics. We obviously have Anthony Grimani has done some awesome work. As you guys know, he's provided the uh, acoustic treatments in here with Sonatus. The one thing I didn't want to do was have a room that was like an anechoic chamber. Right. And you've been in probably a lot of theater rooms that are, you would say, over-treated? Yeah, yeah. So you can over-deaden a room really easy. You know, people get carried away with absorption because they said, oh, you know, my reflection points. And at the end of the day, you know, us, we're, we're used to having reflections inside a room. It's unnatural if it sounds like it's overly deadened and, you know, it's uncomfortable yeah. to, to sit in, especially for hours. I mean, there's, there's, there's people that talk about sitting in anechoic chambers for extended periods of time and it's just hard to do. And so why would you want your theater room that you're made to spend hours and hours in to be like that? Listen, I did government defense for years. I sat in RF anechoic chambers. That was not fun. You could hear your blood boiling. Yeah. <laughs> you hear it moving through your veins. Not fun at all. So yeah, I really targeted in this room between an RTC 60 DK time. I, I like to shoot around three to 400 milliseconds. 600 is okay if it's if it's a multifunction room, but I got right around 350 milliseconds for the entire audio band down to 100 hertz, and and you could really hear it. You could sit here and have a natural conversation, yep. but then when you listen to music, it's very focused, in my opinion. Yep. Um, I wanted to ask your opinion on what you thought about because we started out with two channel audio, mm -hmm. then we did up mixing. Then we did Dolby Atmos. What did you think about the two channel? Yeah, the two channel was great. So that's one thing I always look for in a theater. You know, if, if you don't have good two channel performance, then you're going to have a tough time doing theater. I mean, they, they can be interchangeable. But now at the end of the day, this system sounded wonderful. It had a great phantom center, wonderful location accuracy for that. And so I really enjoyed it. The dynamics were there. The bass was punchy. The high frequency were detailed without being overly harsh. It was really nice. So the one thing about, you mentioned the phantom center, the one thing about really getting a strong phantom center is you want to have, first of all, you want to have acoustic symmetry in the mm -hmm. room. Secondly, you want to have good frequency response matching between the left and right speakers. And we were able to do that with the RBH system, with active crossovers, with the Mirani DSP processing. And I wanted to trick you. I wanted you to sit down and think the center channel was on. <laughs> and that's exactly what you heard, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to a lot of systems and, you know, this one does a fantastic job. I, I always look for that phantom center. And, you know, these speakers are towed in just enough where it really pops, and, but the soundstage isn't overly thin. Because that's one thing that people can do is, you know, you can tow in your speakers too much and it really thins out that soundstage. Mm -hmm. So this is 
you know, a happy medium of being wide enough yet that nice fandom center with the mouth sounds small. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So I wanted to get your impressions now. We did some Dolby up mixing. We used a Dolby surround up mixer. We compared it to the Oro 3D up mixer. Of course, I have DTS X. I'm not a big fan of the two channel up mixer for DTS. It's really between Oro. I switched between Oro and the Dolby up mixer. What did you think when you did your reference? Because you listen to reference material you're used to, mm -hmm. and then I throw on some music that has a lot of decorrelated information. Mm -hmm. What did you think about when you went from the Dolby up mixer to the Aura? What were your experiences there? Yeah, so I used one of my favorite demo tracks, which is uh, Hideaway by Jacob Collier. So the it, it's got a lot of ambient sounds to it. It's got a you know, very deep bass opening, and it's got you know very, very detailed voice. And you know, there's a knock on a guitar that's hard to beat. So between, you know, we, we tried out a few different versions, the, the Dolby Upmix really did a great job of stripping away those ambient sounds and putting them throughout the room while keeping the real you know meat and potatoes, the vocals and the drum hits in the front. And so it was a really, really nice you know, immersive sound. And you know I typically haven't used as many Upmixers. I'll be straightforward. Uh, in this, this room, it was really great to have that demo and, and hear it on a you know, reference level system. What did you think about when you switched from the Dolby up mix to the Oro up mix? Yeah, I mean, for you know, for the demo of that song in this room, I think that the I, I like the Dolby a bit better. You know, I, I do. Uh, I think that it sounded a, those ambient sounds being moved around the room did sound a bit more immersive. More and discreet. again, you know, we we didn't have a chance to go through and demo it for hours and hours on end for those. But you know, from this from this example, I I think so. Yeah, awesome. So I wanted to ask you because. Um, the one thing I'm really a champion of in the last six months is this Dolby Atmos music. It came out yep. of nowhere. Yep. Literally, we went from having all two channel streaming, <laughs> yep. then we got lossless streaming, which was great. All of a sudden, Dolby Atmos music was streaming on Apple Music. It was on Tidal. It's on Amazon HD. I'm in love with it. What did you think about it? Because I played The weekend for you. The weekend is some serious oh, Atmos mixing, really yeah. well done. You know, and that was, I, I had the same wonder. It came out so quickly. I was like, is this going to be gimmicky? Is it just going to be, you know, uh, like like a the early 3D movies of just a hand coming out? It, you know, just something that's just, it has no point. But I think that they've done a really good job of keeping the artistic vision inside the music and still making it very cool to listen to. On this system, it sounded wonderful. The weekend, you know, some of those tracks were, you know, some of the best Dolby Atmos mixes. You know, I've heard, you know, granted, we haven't had it all that long. So, uh, you know, I'm sure there's going to be more to come, but they did a great job of keeping those, uh, you know, keeping the pure sound, keep it sounding great while just mixing that in. It's not overwhelming. Yeah, so we listened to, like, Sacrifice, yep. um, uh, Gasoline, like all those songs yep. from the new Dawn FM album. Really well mixed, guys. Check it out, Dolby Atmos Music on that if you can. If you have an Atmos system, you really will enjoy it. So the one thing I want to tell you guys about is AudioVice has some really cool tools on their website for a home theater design. And this is what this guy does for a living anyways. But they basically took a scaled down version of what Cedia offers for the pro integrators and they made it usable for consumers. Mm -hmm. And you basically, you put your room dimensions in, you put where you want, and it, it'll calculate where you should put your seats, where you should put your speakers, the size of the screen, the immersion level. Very cool tool. Um, how do you think, how compatibility-wise, how did that tool fare with how I placed my seats and my speakers in this room and the screen size and everything? Yeah, you know, I think it did a very good job. And, you know, I, the overall placement of the side surrounds are perfect. The rear surrounds are perfect. I think everything's very nice. Uh, you know, especially keeping these speakers a bit off the wall was a really great call. Um, I think that, you know, it agrees with the, the tool very well. I mean, the only thing that really differs is, you know, some of the front wide placement in the ceiling. But, you know, those integrate well into the system. So, so I definitely agree. What about the screen size? I mean, what did you think about the, yeah. uh, the immersion of so the from, screen? From the video perspective, you know, we're right about, it's a 150 inch screen and yeah. we're about 15 feet away from it. So somewhere around like a 43-ish viewing angle, which really works well in this room. Uh, you know, I prefer a wider viewing angle. I think the THX recommended or the SMPTE standards are right around 38 degrees for 16 by nine. Uh, this is a little bit larger, but it works really well. And yeah. so it's not overwhelming. You're not getting that sense of you know dizziness from looking at the screen. It does very well. Well, and I also have two rows of seats. Yeah, yeah, so, you have two yeah. rows of seats. So it really would probably be close to ideal for between the two rows. Yeah. And so it's it's about what the viewer prefers. If you prefer, you know, having a little bit smaller screen than sit in the back, but who really complains about having too large of a screen? Go it, big, it, go <laughs> big or go home. That's our philosophy. So yeah, guys, check out their home designer tool. The great thing about that is it could take you to a certain point, obviously, if it's a perfectly rectangle room, 
But you could actually access you guys, you could get through support, mm -hmm. and you could come up for a nominal fee to design an entire room for people, and then they could use that fee that they paid towards equipment purchases. Right. So you know, it starts out, we do free consultations as well. So the 30 minutes initial consultation is completely free, where we're going to go over your room and decide whether you need a custom design. If you just have general questions, we're happy to answer those. You know, From there, we do have a fee that we design at the room, do a 3D rendering, show you exactly where every speaker goes. And so it's great for the customer who is doing it themselves, and they want to know every piece of gear they have. And so we go through do the rendering, the floor plan, the equipment list, and then after it's all done, we help with the calibration. So it's a it's a win-win all around the board. Actually, you guys are one of the biggest Anthem dealers from what I've heard, yep. and you actually help people with the Arc Genesis calibration yeah. too, Yeah, right? so we, we do Arc Genesis, we do Dirac, you know, it, just the general setup itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we assist with all that, because now with current devices, a lot of them have IP interfaces, and so with the, uh, you know, with Zoom or TeamViewer, we can go through and actually help calibrate the entire system. And so it's really helpful, you know, especially if you have the ability to install the speakers, you're just afraid of the calibration, you know, and that's a wonderful piece to join in with as well. What about acoustic design? Do you help with yep. the passive treatments as well? So yeah, we, we've, we've worked with uh, Vicoustics on, on a lot of our panels, and so they do some of the designs. And, you know, if, if a customer just wants to treat their first reflection points and, you know, know about, you know, axial reflections and where they need diffusion versus absorption, we can absolutely help with that. And we can also go anywhere from the person who just wants to put up a couple panels to the person who wants to do their entire room in, in, in sound treatment. So yeah, we help all around the board. Right. So last thing I want to talk to you about is I, I let you listen in the family room, which is not an acoustically controlled room. Mm -hmm. It's a multifunction room, mm -hmm. but the RT60 is still pretty good in there. It's right mm -hmm. at the borderline of where I would want to start putting treatments. You got to hear the Paralyssons firsthand. What did you think about the Paralyssin S7T yeah. and their S5C center channel? It was great. Yeah, it was it was great for the for that room itself and your I think you were using Focals as your surrounds. Actually, I was using Paradigm in uh, Paradigm. Yeah. That's what they were. Yep. Yeah, the elites. And, yeah, and those sounded awesome yeah. so that was that was really that was one of the things that really stood out i love how you have the front stage is in room speakers because mm -hmm. that's where it really matters in my opinion and then you have the kind of uh the, the functionality side of it where you have it in ceiling for the rear speakers and since those baffles are angled it just sounds wonderful yeah so those are the elite 80 r's i believe yep and then the 80 a's which fire down we had four for atmos and then we had the two jl audio 13 inch in wall yep. subwoofers and those those really hit <laughs> that, yeah. that that's a great sounding system well, I was glad you had a chance to kind of listen to at least two of the systems in here. Obviously, mm -hmm. this is a work in progress. We're not done. We're going to get the cosmetics all nice and tricked mm -hmm. out. Hopefully, next time you come, that'll yeah. be all ready. And uh, we got to have you back and do more videos and talk more audio. We're going to have you back on our live streams as well. Guys, don't forget, we have a Heiko contest giveaway going. Mm -hmm. These guys are sponsoring a 5.1 speaker giveaway. Yeah, and that's a really great system. I'm, I can't I'm, wait. I'm excited it. for everybody to hear it. I think everyone's going to really enjoy it. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming here to visit us, spend some time yeah. with us, Nick, do a couple of shots. <laughs> it's always a good thing. <laughs> Guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to ask questions or suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. All right, audio's good. You see the. See it going now. Good. Okay. All right. Take three. Take three. Here we go. <laughs>